All right, man, you're tuning to another episode of the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast. I'm your brother, Oh God, representing Hip Hop News Uncensored, and sitting across from me is my co host. What up, what up, y'all? It's your man, Sam, and viral hip hop news. We're in the building on this Tuesday, like we always are, but we got a special guest in the building yeah. for the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast. Our man, Jackie Long, is in the building. Mr. Long, how you doing today, family? Man, I can't call it, man. I'm enjoying life. Like everybody should, man. This COVID nineteen got us all hitting and everything, but as you can see, we still get to see our peoples and still get to work and have fun. So it's all love, man. <laughs> Dope. Yeah, yeah. Sp- speaking of the COVID, man, how's it affecting you right now? Obviously, if you're in one of the you know these uh, red states, they call us pretty much everywhere now. You can't really move around. So how's that affecting you right now, man? How you taking it? I'm taking it very serious, you know, doing everything that they saying, wearing your mask, um, wearing the glove, got all the sanitized stuff, like from you name it. I got hand sanitizer strictly for your hand. I got the whole box. I got everything. I've been following all the rules. Um, I go out to the grocery store, of course, um, see my parents every now and then. But that's really it. I don't go too many places unless I'm going to the studio. And other than that, I'm right back home and taking a shower ASAP and doing all that stuff because now I feel and I don't want to feel like that, but now I feel like everybody needs to be clean. Mm -hmm. So it's like when I go out now, it's like, where your gloves at and and your mask? I can't talk to you right now because you don't got your cell phone, but uh, that's, that's, that's just good seeing you, you know? And like now I don't give people, I don't care who you is. I just ain't shook nobody hand and I don't know how long. I've been giving everybody the elbow. And <laughs> yeah. it's, it's been cool. It's been the same love, you know, and, and they know what's up at the end of the day. And now when people wear these masks, it's like it, it's it, it, people putting styles to it and everything. So it's like, man, people still trying to find, some people are still trying to find fun ways to go through this. And I got to lot of energy man so it's not too much fun you can keep from me i i know how to have fun by myself if that's the case i play video games play music read a book talk to my homeboys online Mm -hmm. uh talk to my homeboys i'm writing scripts with get on facetime with them i'm working on other stuff i can have meetings with people it's shit it's fun it's shit different that you know like if we happen if this shit happen ever again look you better know how to survive in your own damn house Yeah. yeah It's fun, man. This is all entertainment to me, man. This is something new to life. I'm glad I'm living to be around it, to be like, man, y'all remember the time we had the uh, the punishment? When we had the, the curfew and shit? <laughs> we had to stay in the house. We couldn't do shit. You, yeah. know, you come outside without your mask, you're going to get your ass beat. Wow. I'm, I'm like, man, this shit is fun, man. Get your <laughs> ass in the house. For all them players and think they cheaters and shit. What girl your ass going to stay with, motherfucker? <laughs> you, don't know. You, don't, you ain't slick now, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> but this shit, this shit is fun, man. And I'm just glad. You know, I hate for some people. I hate for the people, you know, of course, who don't have money to survive this type of stuff. I feel sorry for them and everything, you know. And, and a lot of people who stop their work and can't pay. But I, I know certain things they're trying to fix to make it where we you don't have to pay or we're seeing your check all that is lovely but at the end of the day people still certain fun to them is having is working you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like, I, like i'm mad i'm not working you know that's what makes me happy so you know at the end of the day doing stuff like this i'm glad when i get opportunities and i appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity you know what i'm saying to do stuff like this and at the end of the day it's fun man it's fun so you know, COVID nineteen. Thank you for coming and thank you for letting us beat you. Beat you, motherfucker. You ain't slick. <laughs> Word. Now we appreciate you too, fam. Let me ask you this. Um, obviously, we all know you, especially around here, is Esquire. Yeah, from the Come legend. Come on, talk movie. to him. I got yeah. you. Look. You know, there, you there, there we go. What up? What up, Esquire? We, we, we know the crew. Now I'm saying Cascade and shit. But all seriousness, Georgia. They're talking about opening up. Um. I know a lot of people are happy about that, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about some other things. But what do you think about Georgia opening up right now or the, or the talks of that possibly happening? I think it's all fucked up <clears throat> because it's letting you know you don't care about the people <clears throat> because they don't have no cure for the virus or anything yet. So why would you put these people back in the public and out to everybody and you tell them to do the same thing and everything? I think if that's the case, if you holding out and doing something right now, and I know I just said people want to get back to work and have fun, but if you're already in the situation that you're in, why are you just going to pick Atlanta? 
out of all the places, you know, and then you put these people back to work, just a few things to go get a haircut and go get your nails done. You better learn how to do your fucking nails in your house Fact. and go learn how to cut your hair for now. Ain't nobody too impressed. So why would you put these people that's letting you know that you really don't care for these people? Mm. It's letting you know, like, y'all just go out there because they say all this stuff about Atlanta and this and that. So they probably what? Trying to say, go, go. What the, it, it don't make sense, man. I, I don't agree with it. I think that they should stay in or, or if that's the case, everybody should be off if that's the case. But I don't think nobody should be off if we haven't found no cure to this virus yet that's going around. So yeah. it's like at the end of the day, if you ain't got a cure for something, we don't know what it is. They saying it take this 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 amount of days to get it and this and that. Well, that's how many days y'all gonna have to figure out to pay us and make things essential for us. Because at the end of the day, why are you just gonna pick Atlanta to go out there and kill they self? They got huh. kids and everything in this world too. Right. Y'all said kids can't catch the COVID nineteen. Kids don't get the 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 the, the uh the uh disease the uh, whatever the coronavirus. But I see kids catching it. So y'all don't care about these kids. So at the end of the day, I don't agree about it. I think it's messed up, and I think they. Sh I don't know how to fix the problem. I think they need to tell somebody or whatever. I wouldn't if I was the the the, uh, comp, the business. I wouldn't open it. I wouldn't open up. If y'all already been in the situation, it's like, okay, y'all probably gonna get some business, of course, nail salons and all that. But what if somebody coming up with the coronavirus? Mm -hmm. Then what? Then what? <clears throat> yeah. Then y'all passing it along because y'all chose to let people go. What y'all gonna do? Let one person in at a time and sanitize. The, the day gonna be over by the time y'all keep sanitizing the damn building. Y'all gonna have what two customers out the day? Yeah. They ain't gonna do that though. They're gonna have them in there flooded, chairs gonna be packed, and mm -hmm. it's gonna be in, you know what I mean? Don't be come on, man. Don't do Atlanta like that. Atlanta, Atlanta's a lovely place, man. They people just like everybody else. I understand it sounds good and people going back to work, but why are you gonna put them back to work? There's no cure. There's no cure to the virus. Well, the mayor, the mayor who was a black woman, she came out and pretty much said, regardless of what the governor says, stay home. I don't know if you've seen that. The mayor of Atlanta. And I think she she she's right. You should still stay home. Mm -hmm. There's nothing out there right now, man. The streets is quiet. There's nothing. Okay, you go. So now if they open up them few spots, so what you going to do? Go home and just go to the nail shop in the grocery <laughs> store and come back home. You can do what you gonna get. You gonna get some real. What you gonna do, ladies? Get the real colorful nails with the diamonds and all this. Your husband or your man or your kid or your parents is in the house with you. Word. <laughs> yeah. They know what you was wearing before you was able to pay for all the, the fancy stuff. So just cut them right now, regular. Put some paint on them and, and do your thing or learn how to do your nails for right now. Word up. It's going to be cool. This is a time when you're supposed to learn how to do stuff, man. Stuff you ain't never thought you was going to do or have to do. Learn now. Learning, they always say, is the key to the world. Learn then. Can, you should never be afraid of learning and you should never be afraid of God. And, and that's just real. There's people out here that's afraid of God. People out here afraid of learning. I don't care if you embarrass me if I didn't know how to spell duh. Motherfucker, how you spell duh? I forgot. Shit. Mm. T H E. Thank you. Dope. You know, it's what it is. No doubt. No doubt. So kind of just go back, man. Powerful, by the way. You know, I agree with what you're saying 100%. Let's go back to when you got started, you know, if you may, in acting. Like, um, you know, how did you aspire to be an actor? At what point did you say, look, I want to be an actor? And what was kind of like the first gig that kind of got you into Hollywood? Uh, first gig got me into Hollywood. Man, I used to do so much background work, man. Like, background work is, if y'all don't know, it's like being an extra, but I, I call it a background artist. Um, I don't know, in school, I used to always, my friends and everybody used to always tell me that you so funny, you need to be on TV. You know, that was like the first mm -hmm. little scratch of the, of the, of the, of the, of the uh, you know, it, it was it was the first scratch of something that I needed to hear to say, you know what, I can do this. Because all my friends knew I like, of course, Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence, uh, Red Fox, uh, Richard Pryor, all these type of people growing up. Right. So I go to school, always doing little jokes. He's always say when you got to school, what you gonna do? I used to thought I was gonna be in the NBA, but I was too skinny and little. So, you know, I had a friend named uh, my, one of my boys from my home, Marlon Reed. He got me into uh, doing background work. His auntie was a person who signed in the extras in the background or whatever. And through her 
um, having me do them jobs. I was getting paid like $50 a day. I met a dude named Kino. And through him, he used to always make sure I was in the right scenes when I went to go do background work. So that when I used to see that, I used to be up front and center in the scene with the actors, not saying nothing, but it was the most, the most, the most like amazing thing I ever could see. It's like, damn, I'm sitting next to some of my favorite actors in a scene, but I'm not saying nothing, but it's like, wow, I want to do what they doing because everybody's quiet. It was live action, uh, audience. It was just dope. So every time I would see that, I used to say to the dude that used to sign his in, Kino, who found a good liking into me, he ended up helping me get my three SAG voucher. So when I got the three SAG vouchers, that gave me my juice. That's when I got, you know what? That means I'm, I'm an actor, but not an actor yet because I don't got shit on film or nothing yet, but I'm in SAG Screen Actors Guild, Screen, uh, screen Actors Guild now. I'm official, almost. Mm -hmm. So dude, Kino helped me out put me through the, the, the uh, loops of learning how to go to acting classes, uh, commercial classes, to where I booked my first agency through getting my uh, commercial class, J.D. Fratano, and then I went to this dude named Aaron Spicer for theatrical. And once I was, I honestly got around all that stuff throughout them quick amount of years from high school, I literally just found a liking into it and found a love and just just knew that deep down in my, in my heart, I can do something to make my mom and myself proud. Like I knew all my friends growing up in school had scholarships to play football, basketball. And I just looked like, damn, I like basketball, could play, but I was too little, you know, and, it, and I just knew it wasn't gonna happen. So I was like, what else I wanted to do? Didn't want to go to college because I was like, damn, that's some more years of fucking school. I don't want to do that. I want to get right to making the money. What do I do? And my mama and then my family were strong enough. You know, they was willing to do whatever I wanted to do. They was gonna go with me, but I went to, to college maybe for about a month and a half, man, and I started doing the background work. And then that's when the stuff started happening for me to do Kino. And I got into the whole game, got my SAG stuff, got my first uh, commercials. And if y'all don't know, I've got a million of them, but I'll tell y'all later. But I started doing commercials and all that. That's when you get your juice, your feel of, you know what, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to I wanna stay loving this, this job. You know, I don't want to be being a rapper this week or being a rapper next week. I want to be an actor all day right now. And when I'm, I feel like I'm done of enough, I've done a, a, enough in this situation, I'll go ahead and switch to my other hobbies now, you know, but I made sure that I was in the door for that one first, you know, and I wouldn't say I'm there yet, but I'm, I'm in there. That's what I will say. Sweet. You know, we've seen you in movies, you've been in shows, you've been all over Hollywood. We've had, you're, you're a third actor we've had on the platform, a third black actor in particular. And I've asked both Miguel Nunez, who we've had on the show, and Leon Robinson, legendary actors who I've had on the show. to all show. of them. For real. Um, about black men wearing dresses in Hollywood. Now, we got answers and um, we respect their answers, but we kind of still disagree with a little bit of their stance. Before we go ahead and give our stance, what is In Hollywood, putting on a dress. Your fault. You 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 uh you went out. What you say? Oh damn, we can't hear you. Yeah, you y'all went out. What you say? Yeah, we lost we lost connection. Of course. Yeah. We lost. When you asking me the question, ain't that some shit? Oh oh, <clears throat> we hear you now. Okay, go ahead. What you say? Oh the, okay, you, did you hear any of the question? Not at all. Damn. Okay. All right, so we had, like I said, Leon Robinson and Miguel Nunez on the platform, and I asked the question about black men wearing dresses in Hollywood, and was there an agenda, in their opinion, on black men wearing dresses in Hollywood? I wanted to get your opinion on that, if you didn't mind giving it. Um, black men wearing dresses in Hollywood, and is there an agenda on black men in Hollywood? Are you talking about black men wearing in a movie, or just wearing black dresses just in, out in public? Oh, that ain't none of my fucking business what they do. I'm talking about in in <laughs> well, movies. In movies, man, I, I feel this in this, and this is the, 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 the realest I can say this answer. An actor is an actor. I mean, an actor is supposed to portray anything, whether if you're male or female. It's, it's women, it's females that can play men. It's mm -hmm. been movies like there to cut their hair short. And I know everybody have their thing when a man dresses up as a woman. But some of our favorite actors to this day, 
we know who dressed up as women and you will sit here and say wow they was funny as hell they was amazing at that character married have kids nothing's wrong i think as an actor it doesn't matter what type of character if you know you're playing an actor I mean, you're acting as somebody else. What does it matter? Y'all know at the end of the day what I do for a living. Y'all know when I take this damn outfit off, y'all know who I am. Y'all know that's one of my characters or that's a character that a studio developed or I developed and I'm presenting it to y'all for y'all to laugh or get entertained. Now, nobody can say nothing about uh, Miss Doubtfire. What's his name? Mm -hmm. Oh, Robin Williams. Robin Williams. How amazing did he play Miss Doubtfire? He did his thing. Mm -hmm. How amazing does Eddie Murphy play all the characters he played when he's a female? He does his There's thing. nothing you can say. You can all sit back and relate and say, damn, my grandma's just like that. It's because he's seen his grandma. He know he can't be his grandma, so what, can he, what he has to do? Portray his grandma. It's the only way he can mess. It's like as an actor, I think sometimes when stuff comes out, like you miss somebody and what we get characters from is from what we grew up around. Our, our uncles, our grandparents, we see characters. We see characters. We see it so much, you want to present it to people because people say, oh, you do just like grandma. Oh, you do just like grandpa. They see it and then if you come into that world of being an actor, now you're in the entertainment business and you have a chance to write stories and movies and nobody else can play that role but you. Sometimes you have to get in that dress. To show the people, but at the end of the day, you got to remember deep down, you're an actor. Who cares what they say? Who cares? I'm just playing. I'm not having sex or nothing. I just got the dress on. Just playing somebody that's funny. Robert Williamson had no sex as his character. Uh, Eddie Murphy didn't have no sex as his character. Martin Lawrence didn't have no sex as his character. Tyler Perry didn't have no sex as his character. They just was playing a, a lady. No doubt, no doubt. Very interesting perspective. Uh -huh. um, you know what? I want to ask you this because from the outside looking in, you're the third actor, black actor, one that we highly respect to say the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. But from the outside looking in, I can't help but to say it seems like there is an objective in black men in particular. Are we wrong or far-fetched to feel that way from Hollywood? Like, I, I genuinely want to know if I'm ignorant in thinking that because I want to... I was just about to say, you know how, not to say nothing for our people, but you know how we think sometimes. Mm -hmm. We think crazy over the top. We go, mm -hmm. we we make memes right away. We could have broke a motherfucking leg and be dying. Niggas gonna make a meme. <laughs> we don't give a fuck. We it's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I just think when somebody is so in love with you as a person and a character that you have portrayed so many times, or the work that you've done, they love your your stuff. They don't want to see you in certain things. They yeah. want to put you in the things that they think or they feel or they know that you should be in. Mm -hmm. They don't want to see that person like that because if you played a, uh, every movie you did was an action film or a love story or you played a hardcore gangster, they don't want to see you go to a dress. You understand what I'm saying? Word. They more like, motherfucker, what you doing? Nah. Nah. They going to think you are gay or something like that it's like at the end of the day i'm getting a check you hang with me every day you don't smoke weed with me you don't went to the club and met some girls with me now i play the dress i gotta be gay y'all my people y'all see me every day y'all know i like the women mm -hmm. y'all hang with me y'all see the girl get at me you know what i'm saying so it you shouldn't have to worry about what people say. At the end of the day, you got to know what your job is and what you do for a living. You know, and don't let your own people, your own kind or whoever, let you know that you shouldn't or should not do something. You know what you shouldn't do and what you don't have to do. At the end of the day, you have a, a, a mouth to say, nah, I can do this to this extent. I don't, I'm not doing everything. If that, they know they can go hire somebody else. Or if you don't want to say, yeah, you either go, maybe. You don't know. You take a chance. The, the role might blow you up more, or the role might be like, you know, I respect this dude. I'm going to put him in this type of role, this type of role. You never know what's going to happen. Just because they say put on a dress don't mean you got to do everything that, that, that come with that dress. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, 
man, you know, you see, it's just what it is, man. You got it, it, sometimes your own people can can love you, and sometimes your own people can hate you. You just yeah. gotta be a strong person to ignore all that. Y'all can be doing this show right now, today, and have a good, good, good show. And then tomorrow, y'all can wake up and you might say, "Hey, let's do the show at ten o'clock." You might disagree and be like, "No, nah, let's do it at four. I got shit to do." Then y'all bump your heads because somebody wants to do that this time over some bullshit. Mm -hmm. Stupid. Mm -hmm. That's how sometimes, not just us, everybody do. That's why some people make the wrong decision. Sit back, relax, have your drink, have your a thought, read a Bible, whatever it is. Take your time and think about it before you do it. Yes, sir. I want to ask you about ATL, man, and that, that role. How did you get that role? And um, how was it working with T.I. in that movie, as well as, you know, the other characters? But I'll start with T.I. Oh, um, man, that movie was amazing, it was a lot of work to get the to the uh, the movie, you know, because I went through a lot of obstacles. I was out there in Atlanta, didn't have the job for about two weeks, but everybody, we was all at skate practice. Everybody had their role. I seen Lauren Londons, Evans, T.I., Jason Weaver, Brooklyn, the Twins. I seen everybody. And I'm like, I'm not Esquire right now. I was just nobody, just Jackie. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just... To, to go through what I went through, was it was definitely a learning experience to, to know how to hold my head up when I walk around in Hollywood, you know, to never, first of all, never be like you the shit and never think that you just the best shit out there going or thinking you better than anybody. Um, some of the producers don't want to say no names, lovely, because we got it done, but some of the producers at the time know me for just being a, you know, nice humor all the time, always very funny guy, always this. So the role that Esquire played, you know, had a lot of serious moments. So they thought I couldn't, you know, pull off the serious stuff. So mm -hmm. Chris Robinson came to me and um, he told me that, uh, you know, he told me to break the whole story down. The producers, they, they like you, we want you, but they don't think you can play Esquire. They think that you you too funny or whatever. And Chris was like, but I think that you can pull this off and I know you can. And I was like, Chris, I tell you right now to your damn face, I know I can. Mm -hmm. And literally the next day after that, they called me, told me that I was Esquire and it was damn near the greatest day of one of my uh, start of my life. It was just, it was, it was a great day. Cause I never forget when they called me. I was at dinner with my family and I got a ticket on the way home in my mama's car at the time driving driving so fast because i was excited i had to go pack that night and leave to atlanta Dope. when i was at the restaurant and i was in a city called arcadia and i literally was at this just i think it was a chinese restaurant at the time and literally i got my mama card went home and packed got a ticket boom history was that and then now working with ti ti i would say is definitely a great father, a great friend, a great hustler, and great person to do business with because we work together. And he's a great dude. It was it was to, 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 for us to go to Atlanta. Some people have never been. That was my first time ever going to Atlanta to, you know, for him to welcome welcome us into his, you know, his home and you know, have us around hanging with them because certain days they put all the actors with uh the uh what like with a TI certain days we hung around with him, they put us with the girl just so we can because we was all young and a lot of us of us was new actors, so they all put us together to hang out and stuff. And <laughs> TI was a real dude. You know, he come pick us up, he bought us uh <clears throat> briefcases, all type of stuff, just to like let us know like I mess with y'all, we family, you know what I'm saying? And I can never say nothing bad about him. He was a great actor in the film. Me and him bonded real good. That was a, the, the 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 good thing about it. We had great chemistry in the movie. You know what I'm saying? And it built us it built us a friendship to this day. Like you know, we talk every now and then. I haven't talked to him in a while, but when we do see each other, you know, it's always what up. You know, the last time I recently talked to him, we had a few means about certain things, and uh, you know, that was probably last year. And uh, but you know we we all family we all love each other. Lauren London, I uh, still talk to Lauren, and you know she's she was lovely to work with. She was such an amazing person, first time meeting. Also, um, Jason Weaver was all 
Jacquees, a big fan of his, mm -hmm. you know, just growing up with all his stuff. I was very excited, you know, to be working with him because I'm such a big fan of his st still to this day. And um, working with Michael T. Williamson and L Lynette McGee and, and all these big dogs, man, it was just amazing. Even around Outkast, Andre 3000, Big Boy, uh, Al Albert Daniels, you know, uh, the twins, Khadija Malik, everybody, was, the cast was so amazing. It's like we had opportunities with everybody. We got to see Diana Ross at our set, man, because <laughs> Evan Ross was in it. It was like this this shit was popping. Will Smith was the producer of the movie. And Damn. Jada Pick, it was like, oh shit. It was like everybody was here. It was like, it was just a lot of fun, man. The cast was unbelievable. I mean, all of us worked our ass off and we made history, man. And I love every last one of them to this day. I know a lot of them on. Uh, grew up and got kids and everything except me. I think I'm the only cast member that don't got no kids. That's crazy as hell. Man, enjoy this shit. <laughs> you, brother. Enjoy it. Don't even worry about it. Y'all got kids. Lauren got kids. Evan got kids. Brooklyn got kids. Jason Weaver got kids. The twins both got kids. Damn, I ain't got no kids. They they right, that they right, that they right. I was about to say, hold on, wait. You, but you older than me. Shit, you got me about two years. You October 23rd, 81. I'm 21st, 83. Yeah, where your babies yeah, at? Yeah, don't be telling everybody that. Don't be telling everybody <laughs> that. Hey. I'm still playing 17. This is just a beer. Hey, it's all good, man. We don't crack. You know what I wanted to ask you, man? When did you realize, oh, shit, ATL is a classic? We've seen movies um, throughout our life and our childhood that we was like, no, that, that's a classic right there. Whether it got the credit it deserves or not, we know it goes down as a classic. When did you realize, yo, I was in a classic movie? ATL is a classic. When, when... Tuesday, April 21st, I got asked that question is the day I knew still, still to this day wow. that it was a classic. <laughs> when that's you just asked me that again, that's yeah. how I know to this day that that movie's been a classic ever since. Because I've been hearing the same thing, my man, forever, forever, forever. It's like that movie is such a classic and it's so big, it's crazy for some of the people who haven't seen it that probably have seen it now and all this. The movie is so big sometimes it make it make people when they see you make make it seem like you only did ATL your whole damn career. Word. That's how big the movie is. Yeah. It's like, damn, y'all didn't see, y'all didn't see this movie. Mm -hmm. Y'all didn't see that? Y'all didn't see that. Y'all just still talk about <laughs> ATL. Mm -hmm. It's like, come on, man. I love ATL, but come on. Now the new thing is ATL two, ATL two. Just gonna ask you about ATL2. that. ATL <laughs> two, ATL two, ATL two, ATL two, ATL two. Hey, ATL two. Are you in that? Listen, man, ATL two. All I can say is, it has been talked about. It has been meetings. It has been a lot of things. But right now, man. It's a lot of things going on in the world that we got to be safe about right now. Right. So don't even worry about ATL, ATL you know. You got to get me, Lauren T.I., and Chris Robinson all together, man. Then we're going to make a film if that's what it is. But sometimes the best don't need to be touched. You that's understand? Very true. The best can chill sometimes, you know. Yeah, I'm blessed for all of us to say, yeah, we still look the same, look young. Yeah, we can do it. But if it happens, it happens. And if it don't, it don't. At the end of the day, I still want to appreciate the people for liking that movie, loving that movie. And I thank y'all, man. But I hope one day we can give y'all what y'all want. Or I hope one day it just be left alone. I don't know. Whichever one comes. No, <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. I want to ask you about uh, Nipsey. I've seen a few pictures of you with Nipsey. Um, I want to ask you, how was your relationship with Nipsey, if you had any, or did you just know him in passing, and how you felt about that situation? Man, I've been knowing, man, I've been knowing Nipsey for a while, man. It's, ah, ah, Nipsey, man. Nah, it's so funny, speaking of Nipsey, man, the first time um, I ever even heard about Nipsey was from Lauren London, man. It was the funniest. We was in Atlanta shooting she was shooting something different the game and i was shooting something else and i would never forget i always tell her this story i went to her hotel to help her go over some lines and in the midst of us going over the line she was like 
playing some music. She was like, Jackie, you know Nipsey Hussle? I said, nah, who is who Nip? Who is that? He like he from he from LA. I was like, nah, what he what he what he she, she like he a rapper, blah, blah. She said, Oh, I want him so bad. I want him so bad. I was like, let me see it, nigga. So she showed me Nipsey all in his tank top, all skinny. And so I said, look at that I said, okay. She like, I said, well, why don't you go get it then? Literally, I don't know how many, like a year passed or some months after the game. I don't know if it was recently. I don't know. Whatever it was, all I know is Lauren London was with Nipsey Hussle. <laughs> yeah, all I know. And I said, sis got what she wanted. She said she was going to get it. And honestly, it was the most coolest thing. But I did meet Nip through uh, Lauren. No, I met um, Nip. It was kind of through, uh, you know, Deshaun Jackson. Hell yeah. Years. Mm -hmm. I met, I met, I met him. Me and Deshaun is real cool. So oh. I met him, him and him and Nipsey, Nipsey was real, real cool. So I've been knowing the Deshaun Jackson for shit damn near since he got in the draft and before, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of my close friends, Smitty is real close with him. So, you know what I'm saying? That's how me and DJ connected and me and DJ connected real, real fast. And, and we was like the best of friends. So it's like, he always, Nipsey would always be around, d -Jack around, and just everything, you know. He knew some of my friends that did the Kush, the Kush boys, and some of my friends from uh, Pasadena, active in L.A., dude. So it was like so many people that knew him that I was attached to, but d -Jack was the one that I always was around. You know what I'm saying? So Nip would always be there, and then it was just funny because the times when I knew he wasn't with Lauren yet, but I seen Lauren maybe first and knew she was with him. But then when I seen him and he was like, let me know, yeah, I'm with Bud, Jack. You know what I'm saying? And all that type of stuff. It was just funny because I ain't never, I remember they used to say hood so much. I didn't know what hood was at first. They say hood with everything. I was like, hood, hood, hood. I started saying hood, what hood? Where we at? We in the hood? What? I didn't know, but until I knew, but Nip, Nip used to always just have me laughing because they say hood until I found out what it, what it meant and what it was. But, Nick was a real cool dude, man. He was always just a intellectual dude, always just telling you some some knowledge when you seen him. It was never just like no no bullshit. And, he, and if he respected you who you was, he gave you that respect. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, these some people that 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 like you and and, and mess with you, but they really don't give you your respect. You know, he was a dude. He didn't care if you was big, small, not even on the map. He would show you your respect. You know what I'm saying? He was one of them dudes you respect. If you respect me, I'm going to respect you back. Or if you seem like a dude that I know that that's a respectful dude, I'm going to fuck with you. And Nip was always just a cool dude, man, just to be around, even when I worked with him in the videos. And um, it, was, it was just a great, great dude, man, to learn from and just watch. I like, what I loved about him uh, a lot, how he always carried himself, you know, <laughs> whether if it was in his gang, gang, gang attire or his business attire. It was always, it was his style. He had his own moves. He had his own ways. He had his own team and everybody was doing good. His brother Black Sound was amazing to just keep them all together like that. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it was amazing, man. I'm glad that he started something, you know, with this marathon continue because it's definitely a motivational uh, uh, thing, man, for us all. You know, I like live that on to this day. It's like, I got to keep this shit going just for myself. You know, it's the marathon. I, mean, I got to keep this shit going. You know, and that and that that right there is just a true statement. I'm glad you know that he left us to, to with that. You know, so great dude, man. Amazing, amazing dude, man. Hey, 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 that he's gone. Well said. Um, to kind of transition into another legendary rapper and kind of giving flowers while they're still here, because that's a lot of the criticism we get. We don't give our legends the flowers while they're here, man. I'm gonna talk about Outcast, Big Boy, Andre 3K. Now you work with them in Idlewild. Back in, I think, 07, you played Monk. And then again in ATL, you reminded me of that. I was like, oh, shit, he hit play with Big Boy twice. Was there a special bond between you and Outkast? How did that relationship go? How is that relationship now? Uh, Brian Barber, man. And just the first time being around Brian Barber, who was a director, I'm just, you know, I don't know if people would just know. <clears throat> okay, we lost you for a minute. We can't hear you if you are. Uh... Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we're frozen. Like, froze, yeah. We're frozen. Can you hear me We're now? We're frozen. Yeah. I don't nah, think you can hear us. Y'all frozen. Y'all can hear me? No. Yeah. Now we good. Yep. Okay. Um, a lot of people that know me, man, I'm a just a real laid back, cool guy. When I first met um 
uh, outcast. They was always just the realest dudes, man. They very humble uh, uh, AT aliens, man, like they say, man. They is the most coolest dudes, just like God, man. They cool. All Atlanta dudes is always just cool. And uh, I was always just a real dude around them. I'd be rapping around them, just, you know, just being funny, being who I am. And them dudes, everything I've done, I did a video with them. I can't even remember the name of the video, but that was all because I was real close with Andre 3000 and Big Boy and Sleepy Brown, all of them. Like, I yeah. call them dudes back back, back then all the time. Yeah, talk to me. Me and Andre 3000 used to have this thing. Used to be going around, sis said, nigga, yeah, nigga, yeah. <laughs> and he used to be like, nigga, yeah, when I come up. And it was just like a lot of things. Like, me and Big Boy, every time he used to come or come to L.A., he always come, like, Jack, what you doing? I come uh, see or support whatever he was doing out here, whether it was a show or anything, him and Sleepy. And to this day, we still, you know, text each other and call. I haven't talked to Andre in I don't know how long, but I guess the bond for me just working with them and being around Brian, they always was just some tight, tight dudes that was like, man, I fuck with Jackie and I fuck with them. And they just, you know, they legends, man. They diamond. Come on, dude. To be around somebody like that and just they, I just, you know, Andre 3000, he was just had the, 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 the weirdest, weirdest swag ever that everybody loved. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, that's a cold motherfucker right there. That nigga is swag out. You Word. know? Okay. It was just it was just cool to see. You know what I'm saying? So being around great people like that all my life, man, I just thank God for giving me the opportunities, you know, just to even work with legends like that and have it on film to this day. So when I'm dead and gone, it's still here. Word up. Bob, you want uh, 50 Cent cool now? Uh-oh. Man, I call 50 Cent right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> my cool with 50. That's, that's my dog, man. That's what's up. That's my dog. I mean, me and 50, y'all wouldn't believe, man. Me and 50 talk all the time, man, about real stuff, and but which is a lot of business. And, you know, I was supposed to do a, uh, his TV show for life, but I was shooting my TV show and uh, the show I do on BET. And um, I was shooting this movie at the time when he called me again. So, you know, I missed out so far on the uh, project but now we got bmf coming up and a whole bunch of other stuff right. you know i don't want to say nothing and then i'm in this and i'm in that but mm -hmm. y'all definitely don't see me in a, in a 50 cent project that's my dog at the end of the day Damn. i love that dude. lost him again he's yeah. <sighs> man huh these connections yeah but we're here with uh jackie long man um legendary actor in the building man um great interview thus far sam man as soon as he comes back in we'll resume I think you, you can hear us now i can hear y'all all right, All right cool. we lost you for a second. Uh, yeah, so talk what about you talk about um some of the some upcoming roles you got going on. Slightly. Yeah, yeah, with Fifty Cent. Yeah, I think you know me and Fifty just we got a lot of things that he 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 has a lot of projects that he's definitely gonna put me in, and I don't want to say which ones because I don't want to mess up the surprise or whatever. But right. me and me and Fifty definitely will be working together y'all will see i just don't want to tell y'all when and don't right now we don't know nobody know when they're working anyway you know it's the coronavirus but at the end of the day that's my dog i'm so proud of him you know he went from star breaking uh uh cable numbers now he had abc with for life breaking a, a uh, i mean what i say he's at stars breaking up now he had abc breaking numbers so yeah it's like at the end of the day the man is doing a lot of positive things man that a lot of people you know, should have took advantage of and, and did the same thing. But but 50 Cent is doing some stuff that I never see. Like, I see a lot of producers that was in the game that's known to do that. But as far as a rapper mm -hmm. doing the stuff that he's doing, Thanks. it's like if Tupac and Biggie was here, I would want them to do the shit that he's doing. <laughs> you know, it, it's just crazy. Like, I give all the, the, the rappers who, you know, in this game and that's doing stuff like, like, you know, that's producing films and all that. You know, Jay-Z, Drake, it's a lot more I might miss, but... 50, 50 is a close dude to me, and, and he's been doing a lot of good things for film and everything that you can say has been good quality and all legit. Yep. Everybody's a fan of his work, and I'm a fan of his work. Facts. Talk about him and Ja. Now, we know the versus battles. We heard the rumors, but then we heard Ja kind of dispel those, saying, nah, it wouldn't be good for the culture because we probably do nothing but argue. You know what I'm saying? But talk about that. W would you like to see that? And do you think in your mind it could ever yeah. be professionally done between 50 and Ja? Yeah. Man, if some of y'all know 50, 50 is 50, and he 50. If he don't mess with you, he don't mess with you. If he like you, he like you, and that's all I can say. So everybody know their history and they, they vibe. So, hey, good luck. 
That's all I can say is good <laughs> luck for that one. <laughs> good luck. You know, 50 is a, 52, he's a, not, you know, I don't know y'all like that, so I can't speak on that man like that. I know 50. I know how he is when he gets an attitude with something or, or, or you know, I done been around certain things. So it's like, I don't, it's like at the end of the day, it probably would be something big. It probably would be something great for the culture to see them just like do something together. Of course, it sounds great. It would, but some people, you know, different lives, man. People go through different things, and some people, you don't know, it can be the littlest thing. <clears throat> Looks like know, we uh, get, yeah, it so it's like, yeah, cut it out. We don't get a we few don't more know. questions in here. Yeah, and um, you know, but yeah, man, it's still, you know, I'm very, um, you know, um, satisfied so far. I mean, it's been a great interview. Bro. Yeah, man, I'm digging this joint for sure. Can you yeah. hear us, brother? Yes, I can hear everything y'all said. Y'all cut me off and went in on y'all. I see. We, we, we couldn't hear you, man. Every time we cut you off, it's like, damn, we hear some gold. And then you cut out. For some yeah, reason. my bad, bro. Yeah, that's all good. I can hear y'all right now, though. It's all good. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Um, Kind of transition from rap beats to comedy beats. We've seen some beats in comedy. You've worked with Kevin Hart. Um, I'm not sure if you work with Mike Epps, but we see Cat Williams. And just a lot of kind of friction in the comedy game where you look at it and you remember it of old with Red Fox, Robin Harris, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, they were all in movies together. And it was like, damn, these are some of the most iconic movies ever. You would hope to see that with some of the big iconic comedy uh, comedians at this time, but the realism of that happened in a real, who knows? Talk about the comedy beats, man. And, and, and why do you think they go on as loud as they are now? Uh, man, everything nowadays, what it is, some people getting paid too much money sometimes. Mm. And when you start getting that money, you start having an ego. And your ego can be bigger than your height. Mm. So not not saying that's you can be a seven nine person and your ego can be big as fuck. I'm not just talking about poor people. Mm. I'm talking mm. about anybody. When the ego get to a certain <clears throat> part of your life, some people don't know how to cut that ego off. And they and then that's when they think they better than everybody, or they want to be paid this to do this, or you think you better than anybody thing that's coming up. You know what I'm saying? So you put yourself in a in a box of I'm better than everybody right now. Yeah, I'm gonna do what I want to do and go get these people and be funny. I don't gotta fuck with these dudes. They, they all in competition, or they all talking about me, or they all saying they want my money, or I shouldn't be getting paid what I'm getting paid, or whatever the case. Mm -hmm. So that's where all the beef come in. Because everybody, even you got to think, if we was talking about <coughs> blacks, you got, there's so many, it, it, I look at it like this. Everybody chance will come when, you, when your time is coming. I know a lot of people look at Kevin Hart and they, they, they probably get mad because they say, why Kevin got all of this, doing all this, and there's so many comedians that you can say from back in the day, like Earthquake, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I I can go down the line. I'm just going to keep it at Earthquake. And you are saying why Earthquake is funny as hell, but why isn't his career like Kevin Hart's or something? Yeah, Earthquake is working. Yeah, Earthquake doing this. But Earthquake isn't doing all of the big, huge stuff that Kevin is doing. Because it's not to say Earthquake can't. It just still probably hasn't been that right time for Earthquake to work with them people. Rather, It's not to say Kevin going to work with these people all his life. It might be his time now, and now he might just be sit back producing every day. Now it might be your time, Earthquake, to play with these people as an older person. Who knows? I don't know. But at the end of the day, I think with me, I look at it as everybody's opening the door for us. They all getting their opportunity. So that means you're going to give us an opportunity. So if Kevin is doing something, if Lil Duvall is doing something, if, if whoever over here is doing something, now you're you're giving, you got your own projects that you're going to start. Now you're going to give us an opportunity to be in your stuff, if that's the case. Shouldn't be no, I'm better than this person or better than that. We all, at the end of the day, going to make money and have fun. I like what Eddie Murphy just did when he played Dodo Mike. He mm -hmm. put a lot of people that was funny in his cat. Rather, who was getting paid? Who knows? Who cares? He made a great movie, had great cast. Everybody was good in it, and the film was great. He worked with old people and new people. Wasn't no problem. Mike Epps was even in that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think Mike Epps is funny as hell. Hell yeah. yeah. And and if they, if him and Kevin had that problem back in the day, 
who bigger and who is this. I don't know. I think y'all both funny as hell to me. That's all I know. Facts. I think y'all both great talented motherfuckers, and that's all I know. I don't know who pocket is bigger, who pocket is, is wider. I don't care but fuck. I just know I watch y'all stuff because y'all entertain. That's a fact. That's just real talk. <clears throat> you know? So yeah, there you go. No doubt. The question the question I have for you is um I seen a video on YouTube where um you met Eminem. And he uh, he pretty much remembered, you know, um, your ATL lines, and that shocked you. Talk about the whole experience for our audience, please, if you may. Man, it was shocking because this movie right here, he produced. Oh, okay. Shit. Wow. And I ain't never seen the motherfucker. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's the whole shit. Oh, I ain't never seen him. So. You know, I'll be around 50 all the time. I'm like, damn, I'm going to run into him one day. <laughs> it took me all the way to the goddamn Hollywood star with 50 to go see Eminem, man. And when I seen him, it was like, you know, I don't care how people say they can say, you all, oh, you looked at too exciting. You looked at corny motherfucker. I was happy to see an Eminem. I never met the motherfucker. I don't care why y'all say I look. Word. You know, this is a legend. He's amazing at what he do. And y'all don't even know he produced my movie. So it's like, it was just exciting to see him, first of all. And then second, the man said my lines from the movie. I didn't even think he ever seen ATL, first of all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not to, not to say now. I'm just thinking he's so busy, he ain't got time to do nothing. I don't know. Right. Bro, that was a classic. I don't think you know yeah. yet. Classic. So, man, when he did that, dude, I was just like, you know what? I love ATL, man. This movie has definitely did things for me. I did not know Eminem knew who Jackie Long was, a.k.a. Esquire. I did not know that. Even though I, he produced a movie and knew, knew me, but I'm saying I never met this dude and knew and never knew when I was going to meet him. He was going to be this cool and knew who the hell I was, man. I thought he was going to be all like, don't touch me, don't do this, I don't know. I don't know. That dude was cool as hell, man. That's what's up. That's dope. What's the next bar for Jackie Long? What's the next milestone you want to accomplish, whether that be in acting, entertainment, music, whatever? Man, I want to do some animation and some music. Dope. Animation and some music, man. Like Pixar? Like you want to do like voiceover kind of shit? I don't even want to tell you. I'm just going to surprise you. So you already in the works or something? Or you are you I don't even want to tell you. I'm just going to oh, tell you. All right. <laughs> I, I, hey, you ask me what did I, I say? I, I, hey, what I say? I say animation and music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm mad at you, man. I'm mad at you. Let the people know, man. We got Jackie Long in the building for a great interview on the Hip Hop and Sense of Podcast. Hit that like button, that five star rating wherever you're yeah. watching or listening, whatever platforms you're on right now. We appreciate you, man. Where can the people find you at, man? Where can our audience find you? What's next for Jackie Long? As much as you can talk about, let let the people know. Uh, you will. You, Find me on all the platforms, um, uh, Instagram, Jackie Long. I guess if people still use Facebook, Jackie Long. Uh, Twitter, Jackie Long. Um, what I got, uh, TikTok, Actor Gang. You know, that's my company, A -A -G, A G, which stand, you know, Actor Gang Entertainment stand for age because, you know, you can be any, any uh, age as an actor. And yeah. I just call it, I call it Actor Gang because it's, it's a gang of actors in this world. So, you know what I'm saying? That's just my whole company. We produce, write, do everything, shoot films, everything. But that's what AG is. But so I got my company. Um, I got, like you say, I'm working on things. I got a movie coming out, Never and Again, coming out. Uh, uh, directed by my boy, Laz Lizrell, if I'm saying his name right. Um, then, you know, we're supposed to be shooting um, season two of Games People Play. But right now, we're on the um, coronavirus break. So... You know, we're not shooting that right now, but we will be back. <clears throat> um, what else? What else, man? Music. I got some music coming coming out soon, man. Y'all probably didn't know I do music, but, but yeah, I rap. So I've been doing that for a while. It's like a great hobby of mine that I love. And uh, yeah, I got that. And just, yeah, man. Stay 
You, you still hear us? I don't know what happened. The screen went away. Uh, we, we can hear you. We can still hear y'all, you. Uh, but y'all loud. Ah, we can still hear I mean, um, can you see us now? Can you see us? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? I can hear you. A little bit. Yo, can you hear us now? Can you see us? Can you say it again? Yeah. Okay, you can hear us. Okay. I can hear y'all, but y'all froze. Okay, I guess we can just wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, we all good. If you could hear us, man, we appreciate you. We appreciate having you on. Definitely. We appreciate your time, man. If you're ever in the South Jersey area coming by AC, don't hesitate to come by the building, man. We own our own studio. We're in our studio right now, man, Self Made Studios. We appreciate having you, man. Appreciate your time. And yeah, brother, that's all I got. Appreciate y'all, man. Love y'all. Good luck with all the stuff that y'all got going on in your life. And keep God first and stay safe. We definitely appreciate it, man. Much success to you. And um, hopefully we'll be in contact. Indeed. Peace, brother. <clears throat> appreciate it, my man. All right. So, yeah, man, another great one. Jackie Long in the building today. Yeah, man. Sam, man, uh, you know, he gave us some much needed last, especially in the beginning. Kind of needed that. You know what I mean? Today, and um, you know, just a real good down to earth dude, man. I'm loving these interviews. I'm loving them too, man. I'm really getting the uh I'm feeling good about people that we're getting on the platform because they're showing their humility, just yeah. how chill people are, man. And that makes me feel good because early on, I don't the, the jury was out. We ain't know. We know how yeah. we was gonna yeah. feel about some of these people, but been great interviews, man. Jackie Long was just on that list of being another great interview. Can't wait to see what's next, man. Yeah. It's a great one. Definitely, but yeah, man, hit that five star rating if you're listening, enjoying this, driving, you know, whatever you're doing, working, you know, hopefully it's staying safe out there. Do us a favor before you get out of here. Like I said, that five star rating that helps us, you know, what I mean, rank also. Make sure you subscribe because you never know who you're going to hear next on the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast. You just want to see that thing pop on your phone, like, oh shit, that's one of the people that I you know, knew from this movie or my childhood hero. So, mm -hmm. you know, make sure you do that, man. And um, that's pretty much it, man. Um, Getting out of here early today. I'm cool with that. We're going to, um, you know, just keep moving and um, we'll be back in here with another show. Got a lot of interviews lined up. But with that being said, that's your brother, Sam Mant, Viral Hip Hop News. I'm your brother, Old God, Hip Hop News Uncensored. Together, we are the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. Over and out. Peace. Be safe. <clears throat>